All right. Good morning, everyone. Paul Tranny here, and uh, welcome. Good to have you here, Alexander, Amanda, Chris, Ahmad. Hopefully the audio is sounding good and everybody's happy. Hopefully you're having a beautiful Monday, and I just appreciate having you here. So, um, yes, uh, we're going to dive into InDesign. And hopefully that works for you. Hopefully you like the music in the background. Thank you so much to uh, Howard Pinsky for kicking off the daily creative challenge, uh, which was awesome, uh, doing that in XD. And now we're going to dive into InDesign. So uh, if that works for you, we can kind of get this started. I'm always curious as to where you're from. Maybe it's not a good morning. Maybe it was a great morning and now it's the afternoon for you. Who knows? Hmm. So, uh, yeah, so thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm just going to switch over and share my screen and dive into this. All right. Might be a little bit of an audio delay depending on uh, what your setup is. Uh, Gladstone, uh, Jake, good to have you here from Kansas City. And uh, yes, we do have that daily challenge tab, so you can check that out. That's what Howard was talking about uh, during the last segment. So, uh, uh, all right, Swaziland here, and it is evening there. All right, Bethany, you are correct. It is a great morning here in Colorado because that is where I am from as well. Uh, so yes, thank you so much for joining me today. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're going to dive into InDesign, and it's all about uh, making a holiday card, right? So the fundamentals of InDesign, this is a getting started stream. So, uh, yeah, it's all about getting started in InDesign, right? Expanding your repertoire um, of skills and tools. I don't know if you use it or not, but uh, it's pretty straightforward and uh, really enables you to do just about anything when it comes to print. Uh, good morning, uh, Eric James from uh, Bakersfield. Awesome. Okay, so you can see here I have InDesign. I'm going to cover some of the new features, so uh, make sure you just go right up here and make sure InDesign is updated if, if you happen to have Creative Cloud. Hopefully you do. Uh, yeah, so uh, Van Dam, to answer your question, there's a daily creative challenge. You can check out the daily challenge tab. Uh, should be up, and uh, that's about it. Uh, Radley, Freddy, uh, Yvonne, Nick, I do see you on YouTube, but if you could jump over to behance.net forward slash live, uh, that's actually where I'm watching chat because that's where this is being embedded. Uh, but let's dive into this. And uh, notice I have InDesign open. I'm going to go File, New, Document, right? This is typically where I'll start out, jumping into here. And uh, there's kind of a number of things you can do. I want to start out with the fundamentals. Since this is all about getting started, uh, I'm going to just start with a uh, sort of a blank page, a blank letter, if you will. Okay, right here, letter. All right, clicking Create and welcome to InDesign CC. Who's used InDesign before? I want to know uh, if there are InDesign experts out there or just people who use InDesign. I think sometimes the term uh, expert is relative, uh, but typically when you uh, create any new document in any Adobe Desktop app, you're going to have this workspace that pops up, and yours is probably different from mine. And we've changed it a couple times. So I'm going to go to Workspace. I currently have it maybe set to Essentials Classic, right? Uh, but I'm just going to reset that. This is what Essentials Classic looks like. And maybe you'll have the rulers or not. You'll typically have these panels. Some of the biggest things to remember here in InDesign is you have this Pages right here. And then you have layers as well. I think these are two of the most important panels when it comes to organization, okay? And just keep those two in mind. And I can kind of typically start out and just sort of do a click and drag with the text tool and type in happy holidays to uh, Deanna Benson. Why not? Let's just take somebody's name out of a chat. Hopefully that's okay, Deanna. 
Happy holidays to you and everyone else, whether you celebrate it or not. Hopefully you're just uh, spending this season with around people you love. All right. Uh, happy holidays to Deanna Benson. Not that exciting just yet, right? But uh, again, right here, this is my content that I have, and it appears on layer one. I can twirl that down, and I can see there's that text right there, right? <laughs> I love it, Siobhan. Hey, that's a great idea. I'm going to put some words in some boxes and put some pictures next to them. <laughs> that's exactly what InDesign is. So trust me, I'm going to use a template and it's going to get more complex and you're going to learn something uh, if you, um, whether you know uh, InDesign or not. Uh, but yes, this is all about page layout. So I'm creating a printed page that ultimately is going to be printed, but also you can... Um, you can also, uh, you know, publish online, which is a feature as well. Okay. In fact, right over here, shoop, publish online, right? Okay. So right here, I want to drop in an image. We could do that a couple different ways. I can go to my desktop, right? And grab something. Sure. I can do that all day long. Happy holidays. Um, you know, grabbing any sort of image and dropping it in. And it could be a PSD, uh, a JPEG, it could be any number of could be some simple dolphins as I drop them in, right? I can do that, boom. Happy holidays to Deanna Benson from these two um, dolphins, which doesn't make any sense. What we have is we can also pull from CC libraries right over here, right? So I can come over here and say, hey, you know what? Let's grab something, I don't know, a little cooler, dropping in this image right here. Okay, since I've drawn out this box at this shape, I can now have this text right here. Excuse me, I can have this image right here and then start to expand this up and make it a little more unique. Okay, so this is all the get it. This is getting started in InDesign, by the way. Okay, so, so it's for an editorial kind of thing. Any magazine you pick up, it's going to be done in InDesign. Any print publication pretty much is done in InDesign. Okay, so uh, I, I've expanded that out. Right, I'm gonna right click, on, actually this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take things to the next level because you kind of get how this goes, right? You understand layers, right? Things go on layers here. Things are on pages. I can reorient this page as well. I can change uh, the order of these if I want to, but I'm just aware of these layers uh, thanks to uh, InDesign, the layers panel. So I can put those away. I'm gonna take these to the next level because this is this is really cool. This is what I like actually. This is brand new as of October. Um, I'm gonna go to Workspace and instead of Essentials Classic, as you can see up here, I'm gonna change it to just regular Essentials. Okay, check this out. Bop. And let's reset it because I messed with it. Boom, this is Essentials. You know what's new here? Check this out. Deanna, look at this. We have over here the properties panel. You don't need 15 different panels. Sure, I'll still access them, but right over here, these are the panels that I'm going to be working with. Okay, so uh, when I take, say, this image and I, you know, make it taller, for instance, right? And say, for instance, I want it to fill the frame, right? Right down here. Fill frame proportionately. Click it's going to fill the frame proportionately, right? And like I mentioned before, there might be a chance where you are going to have to actually jump out and open up some other panels. They're all under window, right? And sure enough, I'd want to go down to layers because what's happening? Boop, zooming this up. These layers, of course, need to be adjusted. So I need to bring one down below the other, and now we have that text. All right, so this is the fundamentals. Uh, let's dive into this. And uh, let's dive into this. So I'm going to change this text, right? I need to change the, the color of this text for sure. I can select this text just like other tools right over here. Guess what? You can change the color. Super easy. You knew that. You could guess that. Right? Just like that. But let's go beyond this because I want to make this more interesting. Right, first off, there's some changes I want to make and some new things I want to show you. 
Uh, are you ready for this, Adelson? Sounds like you know. Uh, okay, you always wrestle between InDesign and Illustrator. Great point. Like, which would you use which for? Like, so far, everything I'm doing could be done in Illustrator, and that's okay. Um, so that's the thing. Um, Radley asks, actually, over on YouTube, if you if InDesign functions relate much to other apps like Photoshop, Illustrator, and XD. Yes, they do. There are some differences. Some shortcuts might be a little bit different, uh, but that's just because you know they were kind of made at different times by different teams. So, all right. Uh, Colby, what's the character's name? I don't know if you're talking about this this character or this text this text character, but that's what I need to change right now. So let me show you a new feature. You ready for this? And I can't wait to show you this, right? Let's go a little larger. And let's dive into text. So I'm going to change this character right over here. Zoop. Opening that up. Minion is the default, right? And now what I want to do is I want to go beyond. And actually, i got to clear this out. I can check out my different fonts just by rolling over them. Obviously, they're going to change. But not only that, I get a little preview of each font right over here. So I can just kind of look over here rather than taking my focus off of this panel. I can look through some of these. I can pick Aries, for instance. Hold on. I do have to actually pick it. Wait for it. Because check this out. I want to point out that Aries font even though it's not all caps, which I'm going to change right now, is actually a uh, SVG multicolor font. So that's brand new in InDesign, showing you two brand new things. What's up, Paul Alvarez? What's up, man? Good to see you. Uh, right in here. So I'm showing you two new features, Paul. One is we have multicolor fonts, and the second is this new uh, contextual panel for fonts, because I'd say about 50% of what you do, if not more, maybe 80%, is dealing with fonts when you're in InDesign. But notice, as I scroll down, I can select the fonts that I want, right? And I'm digging this one. This one's really cool, right? Boom, just like that. Changing the size, just like that. Right. Don't worry, I'm going to get into templates in a little bit, but I think if you're going to understand the fundamentals, you really need to know, uh, you know how to do exactly what I'm doing right now. <sighs> okay, so Adelson uses Illustrator for most things because you're used to using Illustrator. Um, and that's a big thing. I think you brought up a really good point. Adelson is the fact that you're using something that you maybe that you know, and I think a lot of it comes down to experience. What are you used to using, right? And I'm going to make this quick transition because this image. I actually, I have these two titles that are conflicting. I have this title here, and then I have this title down here. I want to fix that, right? I want to edit it. Let's actually see if I can right click. I got to reach back in the edit original and I can do an edit with. So basically any image that I import or bring in, I can always edit the original. The original, if you're wondering what that is, it's the one that says default. So I can jump out and since this is an Illustrator file, I can launch it and then go right in here and then make that change like getting rid of that text there. Okay, so I made that change, saving the file, Ooh, Anita Lima, you prefer InDesign to any other app. Hey, that is that is cool. You've probably been doing this a while. That's my guess, is you've been working a while. So there you can see it updates. It looks great. I can take things to the next level too. And again, I just always go in and edit original. And this is what you'll do, is you're going to probably edit in another app, like I'm doing now. I'll select everything except for that background, and I'm just going to move this down, right? Make some changes. <clears throat> Excuse me. In Illustrator, using Illustrator, what it's good for, which is all about vector graphics, right? Changing this to more of a pink, saving it, and then we'll go back, and then you can see it update right in here. 
like so. All right, more to do, so much to do. I'm gonna show you templates which are amazing in a second, but first I need to clean this up. Boop. Again, this does text layout, image layout, creates layouts for print or digital. And the key thing is I'm going to be using my properties most of the time, right? I want to change this font again, change it to something else. Ready for this? Ready for this Deanna Benson or uh, Anita Lima, right? Let's crank this up. Sorry, Deanna, hopefully you don't hate me that I swapped out the name. Using that multicolor font, selecting this font, and I'm like, okay, I want a font. I want it to um, be something different. I actually want it to be a sans serif. So check this out. This is a new feature as well. Right up here, let me minimize my big head, I'm sorry. Hello, somebody has a huge head. Okay, so right over here, check this out. I can sort through fonts on my desktop, right? So this is like a font manager right within InDesign. And I can say, hey, you know what? Show me all the sans serif. And not only that, show me all the sort of heavy weighted sans serifs on my desktop. And now I can roll through these different versions, right? Like so, okay? I might find something I like, that's great. Or if I don't see anything that I like on my desktop, because I want something like super chubby, <laughs> I can go out to find more. Bup, right here, check this out. Because as a Creative Cloud member, you have access to, you can install like all the Adobe fonts, right? I can install all of them. There's 15,000. But what's happening here is these are fonts that I don't actually have yet. But look, it's actually changing to these fonts that are out on Adobe, excuse me, out on Adobe fonts that I haven't installed yet. So I can go through and I can kind of pick one that's kind of, I want something that's kind of playful. Maybe we'll go with this one. This one's pretty unique. I'll typically favorite it, boom, and then I'll activate it right there. It says, hey, you know what? Activate all those different weights. Fantastic. Yes, Siobhan, thank you. It, it, basically, this is in-app activation. What you had to do before was go out to a web browser and go to fonts.adobe.com. And typically, this works great. You could find the fonts you want. Typically, my problem is I would find a font I want, like this one. This is a cool, fun one. And I'll activate it, right? And it will sync automatically to my desktop, which is great. Got all these sorting features as well. But then I'll forget the name of it. I'll go back over here to uh, InDesign and I'll be like, what's the name of the one that I just, I don't remember. Luckily, even in that case, we have right over here, click, show me the recently added, right? And we'll see it pop up in here. But still, I don't remember the name. The nice thing is I don't have to. Okay, so Saffron was, I hmm, actually, what was the name of the font? Let's go right in here, boop, boop, because I favorited it. I'm gonna clear all these settings. And, ooh, that's a fun one too, this anagram. You know, and go with the font that you want. I kind of like this one, I changed my mind. Happy holidays to Anita Lima. Question is, how do you create this long drop shadow? That was done in Illustrator, uh, just bending vector points, right? Okay, so keep in mind, I'm, I'm working in this new properties panel, okay? So this is beyond Anita. Anita has been working in it a long time, right? Check this out. I like that this is all contextual because now that I have these two text fields selected, I can say, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and align those two. I get these alignment options because InDesign knows that I have two objects selected. Click, let's go ahead and center those just like that. And that's maybe getting a, a step in the right direction. Work with me here.
There we go. You get the idea. Uh, all right. Cool. Somebody used to say I have nice hair. Ah, oh, my best friend. All right, super cool. We can make this, we can work with this. We can jump back out. And this is what I typically do all day long is maybe change some of this. I don't think it needs, I don't know if it needs to be changed, but I feel like even this shadow, I'm in Illustrator right now, but excuse me, this background, um, maybe it needs a gradient. That's kind of what I'm thinking about. You're like, whoa, that's getting a little crazy. I get it. I think it's going to be better if it goes to a teal. Again, it's a hipster Christmas here on Adobe Live. Let's do something like that just for fun. Maybe I made it better. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. We're going to find out in a second. Um, uh, why use Illustrator when you have all those features to choose from? Because you actually can't, you could do some very minimal drawing, but you, you, can't, you don't have the power of Illustrator in InDesign. Il so I've heard an InDesign product manager say once that all other apps, Illustrator and Photoshop, are just plugins for InDesign because you take content from those other uh, those other apps and then plug them directly into uh, InDesign into your layout. Cool. Happy holidays to Anita Lima. Congratulations. All right. So, um, hello, Matthias. How you doing? Okay, so with this done, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go, I can, I can uh, you know, make sure this is all CMYK if I'm going to print it out. I can export it out, uh, you know, as a high quality print, whatever, as a PDF, all this fun stuff. I'm going to publish this online so you can see it by selecting publish online right up here. This loads up and we'll just say happy holidays. And... Ah, from there, it's going to be uh, give people the ability to download the document as PDF. Uh, that's what I want to do. So this is made on Adobe Live, right? That's what we're doing. All right, now you get the idea. I could publish this out, and I can always update it later if I decide I don't like it, but I'm publishing it out right now, and... Uh, you can see it in a second. So I agree with Colby. Illustrator is my favorite. One of my favorites, Illustrator and Photoshop, to be honest with you. And I also like XD a lot. But really, you as a designer, it's going to take you, you know, all of the apps. You're going to have to know all of the apps. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share this. Happy Holidays made on... Uh, da, 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 you get the idea. Sorry, this is taking so long. Just like that. So if you are following me, uh, I'm going to tweet this out. There you have it. So you will see that in my timeline. You get the idea. Okay. Let's see it come through right over here the InDesign document I click on it and then you'll see it load in exactly as expected and by the way this is the actual font so that's gonna be like super clean by the way all right so I can share this with a client I allow them to download it I can I can have them comment on it that's another thing that's a little more advanced thing uh, but that's all I'm showing you how to do share that and now you have a, sort of a digital online uh, holiday card, and you can also print it as well. All right. Oh, yeah, Publish Online is great for animation, too. Yeah, you could do a lot of things. That's good. Uh, I don't, can you embed, Alexander, can you embed video? And, and does that come through when you publish online? So that's my next question. But again, since this is all about getting started, that's all we're doing. We're keeping this simple. 
So thank you for hanging out with me. Happy holidays to everybody. Saving this out. Let's take it to the next level. You ready for this? Right, again, we're using new features. The big, the two big things that I've shown are the properties panel, right? This is all I need. This is a great, uh, just the best, the, the best time to get started in InDesign because the properties panel gives me everything I need based on what I have selected, okay? Uh, the second biggest thing was coming in here and having access to these visual font browsing is what it's called right from within InDesign. This is also in Illustrator as well. Okay, I'm going to show you some other new features, uh, but right now I'm going to... Anita, you're too kind. Thank you. Uh, happy holidays. Um, yeah, and I'd love to post the link there, but... Radley, I'm sorry I'm missing all your comments on YouTube. If you come over to Behance.net forward slash live, join in the conversation. Um, So Radley mentions Illustrator being a heavy app. I'm not sh like, do you mean it's slow? Because I think it's pretty fast because it's all vector. Unless you loaded it up with way too much, too many vectors, then that's a problem, okay? But Illustrator is fast in my opinion, um, but maybe you're running into a bug or something, who knows? Okay, so does InDesign beat Illustrator in creating fast designs? Uh, Radley, it's all about the which app do you know know better. If you're if you're faster with InDesign, then you're going to be faster in it. Uh, between the two, it's going to depend on the project. So if it's going to be a lot of text heavy layouts, then use InDesign because you're going to have more text control. Uh, if it's going to be more uh, vector heavy, uh, like illustration type poster type, you know, graphics, then um, Illustrator is going to be the way to go. Yeah, Nicole, good job. Thank you for answering that. Okay. It oh, so Adelson does say it does become slow when you add lots of links and various things. Yeah, good call. All right, so uh, I'm going to dive into this. This is what I am going to post. Actually, I'll post that for you. Sorry. Notice how I was trying to get people to follow me. It's just at Paul Tranny, but you can, uh, I'll give you this right now. Boom, boom. Uh, sorry, live. This is being recorded, so I don't want to spend too much time on this, but here's the link, right? Next link I'm going to give you is this one, because now that we know the fundamentals, I'm going to give you this modern grid greeting card set, okay? So we have these templates that we give away for free, which is awesome. So here's the holiday template. So you can make your own, right? So this holiday template, just click on that. It's gonna go out to Adobe Stock, right? And now you can just save that to your computer if you want, okay? That's saved to my computer. See it downloading now, and we'll open that up. Thank you, Bradley. Bradley, you need to, ha you need to join us every single week because this week is all about um, uh, publishing. Uh, well, excuse me. It's all about sort of layout design, Tuesday through Thursday. In fact, right over here, go to schedule. This is what's happening this week. So please join us. Sorry, I didn't mention this earlier. Kind of just dove on into it. Uh, but we have editorial design with Kristen Wolferts, Xavier Carrera, and then Julia Masalaska, and then Ashton Dewey. So we have basically four amazing designers that are going to be using InDesign and Illustrator creating layouts and editorial type work, okay? So that starts, by the way, tomorrow at 9 a.m. or, excuse me, 9 a.m. Pacific time. I'm currently in Mountain Standard, but it says 9 a.m. is when it starts. 9 a.m. clear over to 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. So that's the schedule, just so you know. And uh, that's what this week is all about, editorial design. That's why we're learning this. That's why we downloaded this template. I'm going to access it right now, opening it up. Jose Aldana, you like that? Cheers to you, my friend. All right. 
And here we have this graphic. But now we know a thing or two, huh? This is just some simple text. I get it. I get it, right? Here's this X, which is basically an image placeholder. Say, so, hey, you know what? I want to put an image here. You can put an image there. All right. Now, this is where I need to make up a fake family. <laughs> you know, basically saying, hey, here's, here's, <laughs> I'm, n I'm not going to, yeah, it's just me. So let's just go out here to people. But now what I can do is I can grab some images, for instance, from my CC libraries or my desktop and drop them in here. Okay, just like that. That looks really good. Let's drop in them right there. Happy family, just like that, okay? Gets a little bit more complex, Afroja. Good to have you here, welcome. So check this out, like, here's an issue, because it's like chopping off their heads. This is not a good layout, right? This is not good, right? Well, I can grab this, uh, what do you call this? move point and adjust it like so, okay? And I can extend it out if I want to like that to fit them in there better, okay? So I'm just sort of manually adjusting this content so they fit into frame, okay? And that happens for anything. So let's just do this one more time. I'm gonna show you some cool new features. In fact, I might open up a whole new file. Ready for this? This is gonna be amazing. Does InDesign or Illustrator have an option to drop in? Uh, I don't, Alex, I'm gonna sound like an idiot, but I don't know what a grama is. Does it allow you to drop in, you mean like registration marks? Is that what grommets are? Uh, I'd have to look, because I don't know offhand. Okay, cool. Okay, let me let me show you something really amazing, by the way. Okay, so so here here's what I want to do. I'm gonna drop in, I'm just gonna draw a box, right? And you might have a layout like this. Like I'm showing you over here, right? I have this layout. And really, this is just a horrible layout. Look, this is horrible. Like why, why, why? I wanna fix this. Nothing is in view, okay? I can go to the properties panel. And the properties panel gives me the ability to, you know, fit this content in correctly. Okay, so right here I can fit this image right over here. Let's just move this over here, zoop, like this. It's fitting the frame proportionately. That's the default. Okay, content grabber. Thank you. So straightforward, forward, Malika. That's what this little circle is, the content grabber. So I can adjust manually. I can use these frame fitting options, but I love using the properties panel. I love that I have these visually because I would have the hardest time kind of figuring out what does that mean? Like fit content proportionately? I click right there, it'll fit it proportionately. Uh, fit content to frame, stretches it, okay? Fit frame to content, you ready for this? Of course, it's not gonna do anything. I'll go from here, fit fr frame, uh, frame to content, this one, now actually fits the frame to the content. This one will just center the content. So you kind of get the idea what happens. This is the new feature, check this out. Right over here, I love this. Anita, check this out. Anita, a long time uh, InDesign user. This is on by, D, uh, by default. So Anita knows what's up. You know what's up. So right over here, content aware fit. So Adobe Sensei, which is just our you know, AI machine learning, says, hey, I will analyze this picture and put it in a place just like that. Oh, it was a human that can't breathe, the poor boy. And right over here, what about this one? Let's try it over there with that one, boom. Bring them into frame. Do that with all these images at once. Bring that content into frame and then adjust with the content grabber, okay? Cool, you like that? I like it. New content aware fit, super easy.
And uh, that's what it does, right? That's what I was going to show you here. But here I'm just kind of manually dropping in everything. Typically what I also do is I go to window and depending on the speed of your computer, display performance is set to high quality display. Apparently this isn't that high quality of an image. That's not bad actually. Just took a, a second to render. Okay, so there's this one. By the way, there's more that's happening here. Ooh, act, ooh, Alexander, thank you so much for pointing that out. Let's go to preferences. Oh, I got to dig this up. Uh, content aware fit right over here. Make content aware fit the default frame fitting option. So this is turned on by default, by the way. So you don't, you can, you don't really need to activate it, but you could turn it off in case you think it doesn't do what it's supposed to be doing. All right, you can turn it off right there. All right. So good call. Thank you for that. A couple new features. Let's go into this a little bit more. Let's go to pages. Pulling that over. I usually set mine up like this. I set up, this is how I set up InDesign. Like this. So I want to have my properties panel, and then I usually have pages, and then I have my layers and links below that. But you can see that there's more than meets the eye. We have this initial layout on page one. Let's go to page two. Oh, dear name here. By the way, let's just zoom out. There's a number of page layouts right in here. So I can go in and pick which one that I want. Ooh, I like this one too, right? So right over here, I could just double click on it. This one looks pretty cool as well. So this might work more appropriate for my content. Dropping that in there. Hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. And it's a hipster Christmas. There you go. Uh, what about using horizontal layout for pages? Yeah. Um, like, yeah, you could, I could, actually, let's do that. Are you setting me up for a new feature? Because I think that's a great idea. Okay, so let's load in some more images in here really fast. Just grabbing some people, dropping them in. I'm really curious to see how this works. Dropping in images. Let's do it for this top image. I apologize, I don't really have you know what? Let's go to some more holiday type images. There we go. How about snowy mountains? Oops. All right, there's already an image in here and I want to replace it. Uh, I will grab this image right here, hold down the option key and then click and it will replace that previous image. And again, use content grabber to adjust this content. Okay. Oh yeah, thank you, Alexander. Thank you, I know this as well. Good call, you're just stepping up and you're like, hey, I got this, Paul. <laughs> so yes, you can watch, you can select multiple and drop them in. And it should give you a thumbnail and if you use the arrow keys, you should be able to switch through these. What am I doing wrong, Alexander? This should actually just work. It should, it should actually, so it shows me that there are seven images. This is the next one that's gonna be replaced. I thought if I use the arrow keys, I should be able to toggle through all of them. Uh, but nonetheless, I could drop one, drop one, drop one. You get the idea. Making life super 
Okay, so from the libraries, I guess you got to put one down first. Thank you for that. Um, but you can see I'm toggling through the other three that are left just by using my arrow keys. So I guess if you're doing it from libraries, you'd have to drop one down first. Thank you so much, man. You know InDesign, congratulations, good stuff. And here's all my fun images and who doesn't want some kitties, all right? So there we have it, we have all our images, we've dropped them in. Now you know that's sort of more of a pro technique, uh, but obviously this is getting started. So I'm gonna keep this somewhat simple. I have all my images, this is images and text. Everything's looking good. I'm not gonna do all these layouts. I think there's almost like too many to worry about. But what I do wanna show you is again, uh, another new feature about changing size. So this currently, um, I can kind of move them around, but what I wanna do is I actually wanna change the size of these pages and adjust the layout. So if I go to File down here, you'll see Adjust Layout. Oh, you can you can make tables with a picture too. Yeah, down arrows, yeah, I get you, I get you. Yeah, I'm going on old, inf like I'm digging back in the recesses of my brain when I used to do these demos. Adjust layout right here. We're gonna go beyond, say, this five by five, right? We wanna make this maybe letter that's gonna be horizontal or landscape. So 11 inches wide, eight and a half inches tall, all right? So I'm gonna be changing this layout, right? And what's gonna happen, it's gonna adjust this layout, uh, auto adjust the margins to page size changes. I can adjust the font size as well. I'll leave that as is uh, and adjust the locked content. So this will automatically adjust all this content for me as I click okay. Let's see what happens. I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Yeah, it kind of did it. Because this is such an odd shape, um, it kind of doesn't do maybe the best job with that. If we go with this one, for instance, I'll go to adjust layout on this one. This is kind of more of a typical layout, isn't as crazy. Uh, but here, we can flip this. So we can go, instead of it being tall, it's gonna be landscape, okay? So going from these being eight and a half by 11 to being eight and a half by 11 long ways, adjust the margins and all that good stuff, click OK. What happens, you can see it adjusts all this content, right? Let's see if I could do before. After. That's amazing. Alex Garaza brings up the great uh, question about uh, uh, setting the resolution in InDesign. InDesign, actually, you know what, let's go ahead and, uh, first of all, I know Alexander probably knows, uh, but a lot of times you're sort of defining your document setup right in here. Okay, so you're defining the size, but the thing is, is your resolution is gonna come from, say, your photos. Right, it's gonna come down to your final output. So it's basically like a resolution independent, if you will, right? And what uh, Val Valder is talking about is adjusting the image size, right? So be aware of the size of the images that you're bringing in, making sure they're 300 DPI if they're an image. Uh, but what I'd want to do is, um, you know, make sure these are all the, you know, full res when I bring them in. So that's the big thing. So does this document have a resolution? No, it doesn't have a resolution. Uh, and the resolution comes from how you export it right over here. So high quality, it's gonna be your 300 DPI. Uh, cool, all right. See, oh, there we go. Ryan Ford and I are on the same page. But isn't this amazing, this adjust layout? How it adjusted not only this layout, but all of my layouts. What? 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 It's amazing. Again, that's a just layout. And now you know how to do that for anything that you're working on. Okay, so a couple other things in here. Since we do have a couple different options. Um, Let's talk about actually some things that might come up into play like with this, for instance, this layout. Let's 
take this. Just a couple things about text. I know these cards are not that crazy when it comes to the design, uh, but what if I wanted to put an image right in here? So I have this rectangle right here, dropping in an image that's appropriate, whichever one. Oops. And the issue is with this image, it's just on top of that text, okay? I usually like opening up the, where is my options bar? Control, there we go, our control bar. This is fascinating, and it's called different things in different apps. But here's my control bar, and I know this is just getting started, but this gives you more advanced control over what you're dealing with. So if I wanna rotate the image, you get it, right? Some of this is gonna be in your properties panel as well, but notice how rotate isn't, right? Everything else seems to be in there. Uh, I think something to look at is uh, you know, sort of changing your text from one column to two columns, right? That's going to be right up here. It might be over here. Oh, yeah, it's right down here. So not everything is going to be in your properties panel. In some cases, you're going to have to open up your control bar or some of these additional panels as well, right? Okay, so for this case right here, I have this image, and I want it to just be a nice small image and I want it to fit, maybe fit the frame to the content, just like that. But I want it to kind of be over off to the side like that and kind of cut into uh, that text. So right over here, you'll notice we want to wrap the text here. Let me zoom in. Right over here, text wrap. Guess what, this one right here, wrap around the bonding, bounding box, click. And now, even though that's Greeking or lorem ipsum, you can still see it's wrapping around that particular line, okay? And you have additional options that you dive into there, uh, sort of determine how much you want to crop it, right? And also the sort of amount uh, you want to fit it as well. So, oops, did I click on the wrong thing? Right over here. The spacing right here give it more space or less space around it because typically by default it's not going to work out so much i'm going to unlock these i would probably take the left and right and make that give it a little bit more space like that but that's typically what you do when you're dealing with layouts dealing with pictures as you start to get more advanced with layouts making sure everything fits just right like so uh, i'm going to go for about 10 more minutes uh, what is, yeah, Alexander mentions DPOI. I don't know what that is, but yeah, dots per inch DPI, you got it. Yeah, under the link panel, you have properties for the link. By the way, when you're dropping in these images, it's important to know where they're coming from, right? I'm pulling all of these from, uh, from this layout are all coming from my CC libraries, right? And you'll notice it right over here. It's like, hey, you know what? Hey, I'm a little, I'm a little library item, right? So I'm always going to be linked back over here to the image off to the side, okay? That becomes important because if I'm gonna share this, I need to make sure they have access to these images, right? Uh, there is some other things, if you wanna talk about packaging and stuff like that, you would ultimately package up all this content as well. So for this, if I wanna save this, because it's looking fantastic, save it to my desktop as holiday card number two. And then let's go to File, Package, and you can see right over here, eight links found, zero missing, everything looks pretty good. Just be aware of this. There's probably, when it comes to print, there might be some really tricky things, by the way. Uh, you'll notice right over here, as you, get, as you get into printing, right down here, this will tell you, hey, you know what? You have three errors, right? I can click on that. And that's a pre-flight that's set up that's determining what's broken or not broken. But in general, you want to package this up. Package up, say, all the fonts. And package. And then that says, hey, make sure you own the images if you're gonna share them, make sure you own the fonts if you're gonna share that stuff. 
and then I can package it up just like so. Uh, Bavik, uh, great question. If I delete the image from CC libraries, does it stay in the design? It's it will not. It'll have like a reference image, but no, it's not going to. It's not going to. Um, uh, yeah. It's linked back to it. In fact, and I think Alexander mentioned this a second ago. Be mindful of the links panel. Remember, this is one of the first panels I opened up as well. This shows me all of the assets. Some I brought in, actually some came from my desktop, those are these ones, and some came from uh, uh, CC libraries. And I can see where those images are if I click on them. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's where that is. Oh, that's where that is. You get the idea. Okay, everything looks good. Notice if you do ever break a link, you can always relink it from your desktop or from CC libraries using the links panel. Easy enough. Yeah, man, I, uh, I have, yeah, I think I've been dealing with something. I don't know what it is. I, I, thank you for being so kind, Tim. I didn't get any sleep last night. I woke up with like a major headache, but I'm not, I'm not giving excuses. But thank you for uh, feeling for me. I just didn't sleep at all, so that's probably why I look tired. Otherwise, that's how I normally look. Rule number one in, uh, you know when it comes to social interactions, never say, hey, are you really tired? Because you look really tired. Because usually in my case, I'm like, yeah, I got plenty of sleep. I just look tired in general. Is that bad? <laughs> anyway. Uh, Radley, thank you. Jump on over, Radley. Uh, create an Adobe ID if you could or log into Behance. That would be great. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Paul. You know how it goes, man. Paul, you just got to show up. You do your job. Tim, you're being too kind. I don't know what it is, but I got a mean headache, and I hope I don't bring it into the office. But that's this time of year. Hopefully, everybody's doing well, feeling great, and hopefully, you're making great designs and great progress in general when you're dealing with um, InDesign, right? And there's other tools, by the way, that I, you know, I talked about some of them, but not really. I mean, there's the pen tool. So yeah, can I do some drawing? Sure, I can do some drawing. I can actually, again, this isn't going to be perfect, but we'll just jump in here. You guessed it. Here is a fun heart using my properties panel or these tools off to the side. Share the love. Share the love. You get the idea. So I think I've gotten a lot of questions on when to use like which tool. And uh, this is why it's confusing because here you have tools that are in InDesign are also in Illustrator. These are the drawing tools in InDesign, kind of limited, right? And then we know what Illustrator has. So feel free. It's the same thing as uh, if you're dealing with uh, XD. So XD, you could you could actually do a lot of designing in XD. But if you just need to knock something out and you're in XD or if you're in InDesign, just knock it out. You don't need to necessarily launch Illustrator and get too involved. So, but again, that totally works. I also do like to view my content. Um, I have it on high quality display, but then I can preview the content and get rid of all of those lines to see the final design, okay? Something like that. And not only that, I'll go ahead and present this. <laughs> Thank you, William Banks. I just look chill all the time. I don't look tired all the time. I swear I'm usually so full of energy, but I was up till 4 a.m. working on new stuff. We have, s there's so many new things. The fact that you are here and Alexander knows, you know, so much about uh, InDesign, you know, there's endless things you could be learning, right? And I just thank you for joining me today on sort of the fundamentals or getting started in InDesign, right? Like I was doing here, right? We created this, we created some other content that you saw as well 
and you saw those links. You have access to this Adobe Stock template as well. I can always repost that if you want me to. But I say, hey, you know what? Go ahead and use this. Make a card really fast. At the very least, publish out using publish online saying, hey, you know what? Happy holidays, so and so. So feel free to do that. Thank you, Alexander. You're too kind. I just appreciate being around such intelligent people that uh, will only make you better. And that's what I think Adobe Live does. So hang out with us tomorrow as well. Uh, we'll be going live 9 a.m. Pacific time. And it's all about, again, editorial design as I click over to schedule. You could see it right here. Cool. All right, that's my time. Uh, you, Everyone... Yes, perfect. Oh, by the way, we didn't even talk about uh, color profiles. That's for another time. This is all getting started. Color profiles, typically if you're printing it out, it's going to be CMYK. Uh, RGB, there might be some shifting in colors. Uh, but I just say get involved and hang out with us uh, tomorrow as well as we dive into editorial design, as you can see here. So I'm going to leave you be. Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out with me. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful holiday. You're going to see me tomorrow, by the way. <laughs> yes, and I'll bring my dad jokes. But thank you so much, everybody. We will talk to you later. Uh, remember, call your mom. Wish somebody happy holidays. And make it a total stranger. Why not? Thank you, Jamie. We'll see you tomorrow, everyone. Thanks.